Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about test pollution. Uh, the basic definition of test pollution is a test modifies some sort of global state which changes the outcome of some other test. And it's usually an undesirable uh, outcome. You usually want your tests to be completely uh, independent and not break each other. Uh, but sometimes it happens, and uh, it's especially frequent on large code bases with a lot of contributors. Uh, I recently solved two different cases of this in PyTest itself, which is a popular testing library in Python. Uh, but yeah, even PyTest was susceptible to test pollution. Like you can you can make mistakes, and it's really easy to end up in this state. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick example of this, and then I'm going to show you the exact problem that I had in PyTest, and I'm going to show you how I fixed it. So let's, uh, I actually already cloned PyTest. I've set it to an old revision because I've already fixed this on main. Uh, so if we look at the revision, I'm currently looking at BC33, which is one commit before I fixed this particular um, solution. So we're gonna clean in PyTest and activate those virtual ems. I already set up a virtual em before this by doing talks dash dash dev env vmv, and I skipped a little bit ahead for you. All right, so I'm going to make you a very simple example of test pollution and kind of show you how it's problematic. And this is going to be an obviously broken case. Many other cases are not obvious. There's a lot of global state in Python, things like modules, you know, variables, module level variables, uh, environment variables, imports even have side effects, like all sorts of things can have global side effects, which will affect future tests. And usually you want to use context managers to make sure, make sure things are torn down and like not modify state in particular ways, but sometimes it's difficult or unavoidable. Anyway, uh, our silly example here, I'm just going to make a global variable called k, and we're going to do a first test that's just going to do assert k equals 1. Obviously this is true. This is a very silly example. Um, and we're going to have a second test, which for whatever reason is going to modify the value of k. We're going to set k equals 2, and assert k is equal to 2. Um, all good, looks fine. Uh, we run the test, it passes, cool, we ship it to production, everything's happy. Until sometime we come along and uh, we, run, we run these in the opposite order. So if we do, I think it's t.py colon colon test k2, t.py colon colon test k, we run, we, for whatever reason, you know, paralyzing our test suite or randomizing the order or something like that, we run these in the opposite order. And you'll notice here, oops, I ran them four times. Actually, we could have just ran them four times, that would have worked. Uh, we, run the, we run them in the opposite order, and you'll notice that this test that you know obviously should pass is suddenly failing, and it's due to the pollution from this test down here. Uh, now, there's a couple of PyTest plugins, and depending on your test runner, there's a couple of other plugins you can do. Uh, but in PyTest, you can use PyTest randomly, which will reorder your tests and kind of expose these pollutions as early as possible. Uh, or you can, you know, even if you're running an xdist, sometimes the non-determinism of the ordering as it spreads it across a bunch of test workers can surface this as well. Um, but yeah, those are ways to identify test pollution. Now I'm going to show you exactly how I figured out which two tests were causing a test pollution in PyTest and how I went about fixing the two. Uh, so I've gone ahead and found some test IDs of PyTest. Uh, so I have extracted this, and I've actually gone a bunch of steps ahead because otherwise this would be a 30-minute video and we don't have time for that. Well, it would probably be like a 15-minute video. But um, I've selected down to just a little bit, just, just about 60 tests in here, and I'm going to run PyTest, xargs. This is a tricky way to fold those lines into positional arguments and run PyTest with them using xargs. Um, and you'll see if I run these, there's actually a failing test. Despite PyTest's master branch or main branch being completely green, we have this one failed test, and that is in this test rewrite infinite recursion. Okay, so the first step we're going to do is I'm going to eliminate all tests that ran after this test because we know that they're probably not the problem. Uh, you know, you can't influence something before you've run. I'm going to go to test IDs, and we're going to find this particular test here. Um, and, well, I guess we only eliminate three tests after it. But what we're trying to find here is we're trying to find the set of tests which are run in order that cause this to fail. And so what I'm basically going to do is take this list of test IDs and actually let's just uh, let's do a little drawing here. Uh, sure, we'll get some we'll get some paint out here. So this line is going to represent all of our test IDs that we have. 
And what I'm going to do is we know we have a failing test ID here, I'll color that red. And we're trying to find somewhere in here the other test which tries to, which will break our, um, our test here. So maybe it's here, but we don't know. We have to find the two tests that's here. And what we can do is we can uh, you know, delete all of the tests after here. So we can just ignore rush and just ignore these ones over here because we know those are not the problem. And then what we can do is we can bisect to find these tests. We can test this half of the tests versus this half of the tests and say we found, uh, we know that when we ran this half of the tests and then this test over here, we found our bug. Uh, so then we can test another half of the tests. We run, let's say this half of the tests, we find this uh, still fails here. So we take the second half uh, and we still find that test. So we take, a, we take another half here uh, that one didn't match it, so we try this half here, et cetera, et cetera, until we've identified just our single test here that causes our pollution. And that's the approach I'm going to do. I've actually written a script to do this in the past with a different testing framework called Testify. I have not done one for PyTest. I may do that at some point. Uh, but I'm going to show you how you could do this manually. Um, so we can, we're still going to do a manual binary search to find this. So we've uh, eliminated the test after this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to call split. Uh, and split is a command that I'll probably introduce in another video. Uh, but we're going to be calling it with, let's see, we're going to call it with dash n, which is going to split it into a number of chunks, and we're going to split it on lines. So we're going to do split dash n l slash 2, a little bit of weird syntax, test IDs, and we're going to do step 1. And this is going to create two step files here, step 1 aa and step 1 ab. And now uh, we need to make sure that that failing test is on the end of step one AA. So we're gonna do tail. We know it's at the end of this file since so the second one. Uh, step one AB, that should be our test rewrite infinite recursion. And we're gonna put that on to step one A. Uh, oops, not test one. Step one AA. And now we can run those two sides and basically figure out which of those two is failing. So this one is failing, and we should expect step one AB to not be failing. See that it's not failing. Cool. So that means we've eliminated this. Uh, let me get rid of this because it's confusing. We've eliminated this entire half of those tests. So we've narrowed it down to now 30 tests in step one AA. Uh, so we're going to call that split again here. Uh, but this time we're going to use step one AA and send it to step two. We again have to do that tail of step two to step one. That way now this has the right last test. And again, do that xargs on step two. And it's not in the first half, so it must be in the second half. Oh, we must have done something wrong then. Uh, oh, we split the wrong, we split the wrong test set? What's, what's going on here? <laughs> How do we get this wrong? <laughs> uh, let's go back a step since I clearly messed up. Step one AA is, is failing. Uh, we're gonna get rid of step two. We're going to split on step one AA. Yeah, wait, that looks right. <laughs> I happen to know which test is the failing one so I can find it. Yeah, it should be, it should be this test. Aw. Oh, we have two of these on the end of this one. Maybe that's the problem. Uh, let's call with, oh, I did it with step one. That's why, maybe? Okay, there we go. So now we, we know that's failing. And you could continue that process, you know, narrowing down half the tests over and over. I'll just skip ahead to the actual result here. I forget which one of these tests it is, but it's one of those early rewrite, rewrite ones. Um, but you'll be able to you know, slowly eliminate tests here until you find uh, just the one that you expect. Oh, it must have been that one. <laughs> so it's the third early rewrite test. But anyway, that's how you can identify the two tests. Once you've found which ones are failing, you kind of look at what those tests do. Early rewrite, and it's the long test name in this class. It is not test basic. Test pattern contains subdirectories, yeah. So somewhere in this test, there is some behavior that's changing how the other test works. I happen to know that it's this behavior right here, and that's uh, that's actually what's failing in the other test there. Testing, test, version, rewrite. 
like infinite recursion yeah this test uh, and the reason is these particular test files don't get matched by this pattern here so uh, this is actually a sneaky global variable uh, and you would never guess that just based on reading this test it looks like it's just modifying a member variable of this particular instance but it happens to be a shared reference to a global list and so when this gets modified it breaks the state of all the other tests and the way I fix this is using a context manager, with mock.patch.object, hook fnpats to be test slash star star dot pi. Uh, so instead of modifying that value, it's only temporarily modifying this value and then reverting it at the end. Of course, you need to add an import here. Uh, from unit test import mock. And so now, if we run the entire set of test IDs, uh, we no longer have that failure. Actually, there might be one other failure because there's actually two pollutions in this. Oh no, cool, it passes. Um, but yeah, so after fixing that, we, we now have fixed the test pollution and everyone's happy. Anyway, that's the concept of test pollution, the, the rough you know, a, approach that I use to bisect the bad test and uh, how I can go about fixing it. Now, of course, your fix might be different than mine, but this is a useful technique nonetheless. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you'd like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.